Hey, welcome to another episode of Dope Money News. I'm Carl. I'm your host. This is my guest, Rachel. Hi. She's a guest with the most. I'm Rachel. Do we know? <laughs> um, today we're talking about dope money. Um, how much maybe Rachel's, a woman like Rachel would spend in her lifetime. Um, but we also want to tell a little bit about her life story. Let people a little bit know a bit like reality of what dope does. And so I guess this is Rachel's story. Rachel, thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. No problem. Um, so we went over some notes and stuff, and I kind of, I kind of got a general idea. It started with uh, cigarettes and maybe sneaking a beer here and there when you were, what, 15, 16? Yeah, like before high school from my parents. Yeah. Still in grade school, sneaking a beer here and there? Yeah. Was it because of friends peer pressure, or do you think it was just your own idea? Um, I see my parents doing it. Right, and they were having a good time? Yeah. I hear you. So, um, you weren't really spending any any dope money on that at that time, though. I mean, cigarettes. Yeah. It was all just sneaking it, yeah. Yeah, mostly. Mm -hmm. I got you. And then, I was um, just more trying to hide it from them, if anything. Right. But then you started smoking weed um, in high school, right? Yeah. And you're still drinking a little bit of alcohol. Um. But this this is probably like your first experiences in spending money on dope because then, then you start to buy like twenty dollar bags here and there. Um, of weed, yeah, I would I would spend about twenty dollars every other week, probably. Okay, okay, and then so you started doing Adderall though. Yeah, I had one uh, girl in school that had Adderall, and I heard that they were really good, and they made you feel like you could do anything and have a lot of energy and um i asked her if she'd tell me some she did and i loved them i snorted them um but then whenever i tried to get more she never had any more so i would have been addicted at that point had i got had that opportunity to get more so but the supply was short so you're still only spending about 10 a week 10 dollars a week yeah but then you progressed to meth once you progressed to meth, you started with, with we, a weed dealer. It was weed. I moved in with my son's dad, and he was selling weed. Uh-huh. And whenever that happens, other drug addicts come along and... Introduce you to meth. Introduce me to meth. And um, I have low self-esteem. I suffer from um, an eating disorder and... Um, uh, body dysmorphia and so the meth cured that in my mind um, and I was working at a good job I worked at um, Wells Fargo Advisors uh, I had my son custody um, I was doing really good in life according to what society says um, and but in the background behind the scene I was um, buying meth about $25 um, a week. It was, you know, not too much at that time. And um, just just kind of not letting anybody know, but I was doing it, yeah. So then your, your friend, uh, Paula, she started giving you pain pills. She gave me pain pills one time. Um, and I remember, I remember feeling like, wow, where has this been all my life? Like, this feels really good it takes away it takes the edge off like you know like I'm always a high strung person so to take the edge off that was amazing and so then one time she left a bottle lost a bottle or left a bottle there a bag of it yeah a and, bag of paint pills and I didn't tell her about it being my best friend I felt bad about that but so I chose was that the, yeah the first time you really stole drugs yeah and even yeah, just the fact that I didn't tell her as my best friend, and it was because I wanted to do them, made me feel horrible. But well, yeah. I mean, that's what drugs will do. So I definitely understand that. Yeah, I mean, I know I did a lot of things like stealing, mm -hmm. that I, I hate myself for. That I would never do if I wasn't on drugs. You know, I just I know I wouldn't. Okay, but um, then you start doing Xanax. You got started getting prescribed Xanax for anxiety and stuff. Yeah. Because so, I worked at the brokerage firm, so I had good insurance. Uh-huh. You got prescribed Xanax and, um... And Adderall. And that was, like, the 
that's when everything started going downhill fast, huh? Yeah, I start, because, of course, I didn't take them as prescribed. Um, I got 90 of, um, of the patients a month, and I was out of them within two days. Um, so now you start spending 25 to to $100 a week. Just on Xanax and stuff, right? Yeah. Well, my mom also, my mom had herniated disc in her back, so she would go to the pain clinic, and we worked at the brokerage firm together. So if I was having a bad day, she would say, come down and get a Percocet, and it will cure your day, and it did it for me. And so um, I, me and her both would go to the dope man after work and buy pills, um... And the dope man also had Xanax. And that's when I was just, um, um, that's what I'm looking for. That's whenever I was introduced to Xanax. And that, it was just, it was even better than the Viking and feeling. It was like, I have to have this for the rest of my life type feeling. And, um. So now you're in your late 20s and you're having blackouts. Yeah, um, it would take so many that I would have blackouts. So you, you lost your job? Um, well, I lost my I lost my kids. Uh, well, I first had um, blacked out so bad that I had took my daughter for a walk in a stroller, not remembering any of it, um, and left her in an alley and came back and went to sleep. And um, the cops were called, and of course DFS got involved, and I went straight to rehab the next day. Um, that was at Center Point, right? Center, Center Point, Point Hospital, St. Charles, Weldon Springs Hospital. And because I, at that point, I knew I had a problem. I would never put my kids' life or anything in harm's way or danger. And so um, I went in there, did the inpatient treatment for thirty days, came out. Um, lived again at the same house with um, my daughter's dad and my son and I was working at the brokerage firm again and um, it was just nothing was the same um, the, the dope man was still calling me and telling me I had a bunch of stuff wanting to see me um, and I started doing it within two weeks if that and um I had ended up, um, what was the reason? Well, but, but, um, when you first got out of center point, they had you on Suboxone, right? Yeah. So this was your first Suboxone, right? First time you ever, um, prescribed yeah. Suboxone? Yeah. And did you get addicted to Suboxone that time? No. Really? How long were you on it? Mm, well, I was in there for a month, but then, like, a couple weeks after I got out. And then but you, I was also. You were able to just quit Suboxone cold turkey and you didn't have no withdrawals? From what I remember, yeah. Wow. But I was also still prescribed the Xenex, so they were waiting for me at the pharmacy from when I was in treatment. So I was going to pick them up at the same day that I was going to pick up my son's birthday cake. And I asked my daughter's dad to please watch the kids because I didn't want to take them with me. I knew I was going to pick up my Xanax. And I picked up my Xanax first and took nine of them at once and went over across the street to the Walmart, but first to the gas station. And that's the last thing I remember before the police So my call me. said you were driving erratically. And so. I was, yeah. And so they put me in a psych ward because I apparently said something about I was going to commit suicide. And um, so this is at like nine minutes. Do you want to cut it off real quick? And no, it's okay. Let's go ahead and finish it. It'll cut off on time. So after um, so after that, you you did end up spending your now you're spending like hundreds of dollars a week, and you end up going to jail because you lost your kids and stuff. Well, you lost your kids. I had a couple. I had two cases for. We're nine minutes already. Yeah. Oh my god. I had two cases for possessions that, for pills that weren't prescribed to me, but yeah. Okay, so you lost your kids. You um. Just so you know, this is going to be continued if you care and want to watch it. At least.